All right, thank you all today. Um, we're joining St. Elizabeth Medical Center to talk to them about interviewing opportunities for new graduates. So I'm going to turn it over to them and let them introduce themselves. Thank you all so much for being here today. Awesome, thank you so much for having us. Um, so I'm Victoria. I've been with St. Elizabeth for about two years. I recruit for a lot of our general areas. So usually med surge, TCU, ICU, EDs. I do have a couple of other areas like the float pool and same nursing that would require a little bit of experience. Um, but Nicole and I work hand in hand together. I work with a lot of the new grads. Nicole's a little over more of our specialty areas. And my name is Nicole. I'm also a nurse recruiter for St. Elizabeth. I've been there for just slightly under two years as well. Um, as Victoria mentioned, I do recruit a lot of our specialty areas. So we will jump into that a little further as far as what new grad opportunities have for some of our specialty areas. Yep. And then just to give us a little bit of familiarity, we wanna go over where St. Elizabeth is located. So our largest campus is Edgewood. So that's located about mm, 10 or 15 minutes over the Cincinnati border. Um, and that's the Flagstaff Hospital for the Northern Kentucky area. But then we also have Florence, Fort Thomas. Fort Thomas is our closest location to Cincinnati. Then we also have Grant County, uh, and then we also have Covington and High Point Health. What was formerly High Point Health in Lawrenceburg, Indiana was acquired um, and is now St. Elizabeth Dearborn. So that's about, I think about 25 minutes from Edgewood. So it's all pretty central. Okay, so first we're gonna start off by talking about the onboarding process here with us at St. Elizabeth. So first steps first is the application process. So we ask that you apply to any requisitions that are of interest to you. Um, additionally as well, for a little bit of extra support, we recommend applying to our welcome new graduates requisition. So if you go to our website and type in welcome, so for uh, this class, it would be welcome spring summer 2022 new grads. And when you apply there, um, you're going to be sent to Nicole or myself. Um, and from there, Nicole or myself will set up a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you to talk about your areas of interest, um, anything you did during a clinical or role transition that you really enjoyed, location and shift preferences, those sorts of things. Um, during this conversation as well, if you're not quite sure where you'd like to start off, that is totally fine. We are more than happy to work with you um, and to just go from there. This is also a wonderful time to ask questions, get interview help, resume prep, all those kinds of things. Um, and then we'll send you directly to the hiring managers based on your areas of interest. From there, our hiring managers will contact you usually within 24 hours to 48 hours to set up an initial interview. Uh, and usually with the interview, they'll try to schedule a shadowing opportunity as well so that you can see the unit and experience it and get to know if it's really the right fit for you. After you do your interview and shadowing session, we will be sending out an offer to you usually within 48 hours of that interview happening. So really for this process, if you're joining a med surge TCU unit, it would probably take anywhere from seven to 10 days. If you are looking for an area that maybe only takes one or two new grads each semester, it might take a little bit longer, but we do know that you guys have very busy schedules. We wanna be respectful of your time. So we really are able to move through this fairly quickly. Okay, so what I'm going to start off by doing is explaining our residency programs here at St. Elizabeth. Um, if you're a new grad with less than one year of RN experience, you're going to automatically be enrolled in our residency or fellowship programs. Most likely it's going to be a residency program. Um, and Nicole will talk a little bit about the fellowship programs, but we'll go ahead and start off here with the residency programs. If you're entering a med surge, TCU, ICU, ED, um, hemodialysis, almost any unit, you will automatically be enrolled in to our residency program. Our residency programs really will depend upon the length of time, will really depend upon what unit you're joining. So if you're joining a med surge or a TCU, um, those residencies are gonna be a little bit shorter than if you're joining an ICU unit. Um, these, then during these residency programs, you're gonna take classes that are specifically designed to enhance your learning. And there are going to be three phases of this residency program. And all three phases will be the same, regardless of whatever unit you are joining. So the first phase is an introduction to the unit where you're getting to know the unit, the personality of the unit, the types of patients you have, all of those sorts of things. The second phase is working hand in hand with your preceptor to provide care for your patients. 
This is typically the longest phase of our residency program. And then the third phase is really a dry run where you're taking the lead, but, the, but your preceptor is still within arm's reach in case you do need anything. All of our residency programs are self-paced. So some of us have been in school during COVID and that drastically changed the way learning looks. So there might be things that take you a little bit longer to get through, which is totally fine. And other things you might really breeze through very quickly. Something that I always like to mention about our preceptors is that they are not told, hey, you've hit the minimum time requirement, you're going to be a preceptor. No, instead they have to say, I would really like to be a preceptor. I wanna provide awesome mentorship to a new graduate. So they go through classes to make sure they're going to be able to do this really well and to be able to be an awesome supportive mentor to you. So with our uh, med surge and TCU areas, we do not have any contracts associated with those. So really that residency across all areas is a pure benefit to you. Something that Nicole and I take a lot of pride in is that we've never had a new graduate come out of a residency or fellowship program and say, I wasn't ready for my unit, right? So we put a lot of emphasis on preparation and education because we want you to feel confident providing care to our patients. Okay, and moving on to fellowship opportunities. So these specific areas, the periop and the endo, do require experience. So if you see any positions posted on our website, typically in this area, we are looking for at least one year of experience. We know we've got new grads and even experienced nurses that really want to be an OR nurse or really want to go in endo. So the way that we provide that flexibility to those nurses without that experience is offering a fellowship twice a year for both of these areas. The periop is a three-year commitment. You've got four weeks of didactics when you accept a role and then you're going to be moving into about five to six months working with the preceptor. Again, as Victoria mentioned, very hand in hand. They have to want to be there. It's not just chosen that we pick them. Um, and then you would be working alone in the OR after that, but still having that preceptor to reach out to at any point in time in your career. The endo is going to be an 18 month commitment. It is eight days of didactics, and then it would be 14 weeks of clinical rotation on the U or on that in the endo area with your preceptor, again, working hand in hand with them. Okay, we're gonna uh, move on to resumes here. So a strong resume for us, we would like to see a 30 second introduction or less than. Um, your resume should answer who are you? What skills are you bringing to the table? Where are you located? And this is especially important if you're relocating to the area, we do like to see that because there could be a potential chance that you're applying to the wrong hospital. And we think that if we don't see that you're relocating to us. Um, when are you graduating, taking your boards or if you've already graduated, make sure you put that graduated date on there. Um, why do you want to work for the given hospital you're applying to? And this is specifically important when you are applying to um, multiple hospitals. We understand that you'll be applying to multiple hospitals. So just make sure that your resume reflects the correct hospital that you are applying to or the specific unit that you're applying to with that application. And then how do your skills and your experience qualify you for that given position? The structure going along with resumes is going to be clean over artistic, what a recruiter would like to see. The most important to the least important, um, start with your who component. So have a one to two sentence objective as to what, where, when, why, and your how components. And then your experience should start with the most significant and applicable experience going to your least. Awesome, and we're gonna look at a couple of examples here. So you're really able to see the excellent Parts of these really exemplified well, and then when it's not exemplified well. So here's our first example, and this is very much so as much as possible uh, taken from an actual resume. Now we've changed some of the personal information as well as the background and the picture to protect this person's identity, but this is pretty much a resume almost exactly that we received. Um, so this person had her objective listed first and foremost as a hardworking RN with 20 years of CNA experience. My experience has prepared me to enter your hospital as a qualified nurse. All right, so we're glad that she had an objective there. However, it's not super clear. Um, we are glad that she was able to say that she's 20 years of CNA experience. That's very strong. However, that sentence about my experience has prepared me to enter your hospital as a qualified nurse. We want to see what hospital, what area she's interested in, and how that experience has really prepared her. And we see in her experience as well, there's all these bullet points listed. This is not the way we, we, we would really like to see a resume listed. We would like one, two, three good bullet points that exemplify how you have worked in your units or clinical experiences, stuff like that. 
So we see in her experience that she has listed up here, we see the dates are from August of 2010 to May of 2015. That's the last date listed. So for me, when I looked at this resume, my question was, are you still working? What have you been doing since then? Um, and come to find out after she and I had spoken, she was in school from 2015 to 2021. So that would have been interesting and good to know. However, this resume leaves a lot to be desired. And also we never recommend having a picture on your resume. So we don't want personal pictures. We don't want your cell phone listed. We don't want any of that. So this is a much stronger example of a great resume. We see the objective here is very clear to obtain a position as a BSN prepared registered nurse in a critical care unit through the St. Elizabeth Nurse Residency and Transition Program. This objective automatically shows us that the candidate has done her research or his research and is interested and knowledgeable about our residency program. So that's automatically a good, good plus for us. And additionally, I could read this objective and know exactly who they were and what they were looking for. So for me and for Nicole and I, when we come in from a weekend and maybe we have 20 or 30 resumes or 40 resumes to look over, it's nice to have a resume that's very clear and concise. Next, she has her most relevant experience listed as education. So for everybody that's currently in school or maybe you just recently graduated within the last month or two, education will be your most relevant experience. Be sure to list that first. She lists her bachelor's of science in nursing and her anticipated graduation date. We would encourage you to do this. Again, it just helps with clarity. She lists her GPA as well. This is optional. Maybe if you have a, a really, really high GPA, that would be something great to list. If it's below a 3.0, we don't usually recommend listing it. We know that you know you probably still worked very, very hard for that, but that wouldn't necessarily be something we'd really wanna highlight. After that, she lists her relevant nursing experience. And you notice she only has three bullet points. So with the previous example, there are about 15 bullet points. But here, these bullet points are very strong. Let's go ahead and read the first one. Assisted nurses in providing high quality bedside care to patients with COVID-19. Each, each of these bullet points have the word assisted. The next one lists documented. The other one is aided patients. So that action word and then what she did specifically. We see other leadership and other involvement is also listed on her resume. It looks wonderful. We wanna make sure and we're glad to see that you were involved in other other things in school outside of just your normal classes. So I think that really contributes to somebody that's a well-rounded person uh, and nurse. Even if you didn't necessarily work as a CNA or nurse assistant, this is a great place on your resume to maybe list some clinical experiences you've had um, or even on-campus jobs that you've held, tutoring, anything like that would be wonderful. So all in all, this was a great resume, super clear, very concise, and one page. We loved it. Preparation is key. So you should always know about the hospital that you're applying for and know the hospital or the company's mission statement and initiatives. So for an example, you could look up what your college's mission statement is just to get an idea and know what we would be looking for when applying for an organization. We were speaking to a class one time and I asked, does anybody know what your college's mission statement is? And one student gave me just about the best answer I'd ever heard. Well, if I was applying to that university, I would know their mission statement. So I thought that that was just so wonderful. So if you're applying somewhere, you should know what their mission statement is. So what to expect. In an interview format, what you should expect. Interviewing with the nurse manager and the team. You may interview with the team altogether and the nurse manager, or it may come separately depending upon what the nurse manager would like. You should be prepared with questions on what to ask these managers. They do expect that and they like to see that. Uh, that same day, there's a lot of the times our nurse managers do like to build in a shadowing opportunity. So please be prepared for that. You can wear scrubs to your interview, but if you prefer business casual, please bring scrubs with you just in the instance that you do have a shadowing opportunity afterwards. Um, we want you to stay on while you're in the unit in that shadowing opportunity. So this to us means make sure you don't get your cell phone out, um, be very focused, very um, ask a lot of questions to the nurse. So not only are they interviewing you, but you're interviewing them as well. So it's a really good opportunity for you to learn about that unit and then to also see what the nurses work like on that unit together. And then in, that nurse is likely going to go back to the manager after your shadowing opportunity is done and let them know how they felt that you did as well. So we really just want you to be prepared and stay the whole time for that shadowing opportunity. 
And then after you're done, we do um, a follow-up conversation with the nurse manager. This could be an example of providing a thank you card um, instead of an email. So an email, usually you have to track down the manager's email through the recruiter and it does delay a little time. Um, the best thing that we think that you can do is keep thank you notes with you. And then once you get done with that shadowing opportunity or that interview, just go down to the main lobby, write out your thank you card and give it to the front desk and ask them to deliver it to the nurse manager that same day so you can move on and don't have to worry about missing that opportunity. Wonderful. Something that I like to mention about shadowing, I recently had a manager that had interviewed a candidate and said, I'm really not sure about moving on to the next phase with her. We are going to let her come in and shadow, but we're probably not going to make an offer. She gave such an awesome shadow. She was so involved. She has so many questions. They were so impressed by her that they said, never mind, we'll go ahead and make an offer anyways. So sometimes with a shadowing opportunity, this can be a make or break for you. If the interview wasn't necessarily what you felt most comfortable in, if there were some hiccups, this could be a great way to go ahead and compensate for that. As we mentioned earlier, you should know about the hospital that you're applying to or the company that you're applying to. So an example for you, the mission statement of St. Elizabeth. As a Catholic healthcare ministry, we provide comprehensive and compassionate care that provides the health of the people that we serve. Our values, St. Elizabeth will lead the communities we serve to become the healthiest in America. Standout facts about St. Elizabeth, we've not had a single layoff. We are rated Northern Kentucky's best place to work. And we are also a magnet designated hospital. This is 3% of all hospitals in the United States to reach this ultimate designation. So these few standout facts here, along with the mission values, took us about five to 10 minutes just to pull off mm -hmm. the St. Elizabeth website. This can be done at any organization or any company that you're applying to, and it's highly recommended to do prior to that interview. Yeah, and we'll look at some examples here soon with questions where you can really see how just this couple minutes of, of research really pays off when you're in the midst of an interview. Okay, so before we get into that, we're going to talk a little bit about demeanor. So I think sometimes we think, oh, like your demeanor, that's just some, that's a little, it's a fluffy part of the rest of the interview process, but it really can make a positive impact, even if it's just a small component. So we always ask, are you early or are you late, right? So if you're on time, that's technically considered late. If you show up 10 minutes early, that is very impressive, shows that you came prepared. Now, of course, we do understand if you are in traffic or you do end up running late, just be sure that you're communicating with the nurse manager or the recruiter about that. Be sure to maintain excellent eye contact and posture. Uh, these really, these nonverbals can communicate a lot and can show that you're confident or show that maybe you're more apprehensive. So even if you are a little bit nervous, we want to portray confidence. And then what tone are you setting? So if you are comfortable providing a handshake in the beginning, you be the one to set that tone and say, I'm very excited to be here. I've heard such wonderful things about St. Elizabeth, or maybe I've had an awesome time on your unit during my role transition. I'm excited about the opportunity to interview here. That would be a wonderful way to start out an interview and very impressive to our nurse managers. So I know sometimes we've done online interviews if somebody can't make it in or during COVID. So with, with online interviews, it always seems there's something that might go wrong or a little hiccup here or there. Be sure that you've tested out your computer, your sound, um, done a trial run. We had somebody that was in, a, I think it was labor and delivery interview, and she hopped on to the, the Zoom link and then said, oh, I can't get Zoom to work. Can you do Teams? And the managers were running back and forth, and they ended up, even though they really liked her not hiring her, not going with her, because they felt like there was so much back and forth and so much confusion just to even get the interview started. So with dress code, I know as Nicole mentioned before, you guys as nurses can wear scrubs that is considered uh, appropriate for an interview. However, we usually recommend going a little bit more professional uh, just to make sure that we are putting our best foot forward. So this does not mean that you have to wear a full suit or anything like that. You're welcome to wear a sweater, um, a formal nice top, um, or just a, a plain pair of pants. We do not recommend wearing gym attire. So no leggings, no t-shirts. Uh, make sure all of your shoes are closed toed shoes. And this goes pretty much in all hospitals. You're not gonna ever wanna wear flip flops or open toed shoes there. And that's a safety concern. Okay, so moving on back to our interview. Um, so with our interviewing session, we really get to see the how and the why parts of your resume. And this is where they really get to come alive. They get to shine here. 
So why do you want to work here? And how have your skills prepared you to work here? In every answer that you're giving, be prepared to reflect on some of your clinical or research um, things that you've looked up prior to the interview. So be prepared to reflect on research or any clinical opportunities or um, previous jobs that you've held. Anything like that would be great to reflect on. So when people ask you to tell me about yourself in an interview or tell me why you want to work here, give me some insight into who you are. They don't want to hear a list of adjectives. And I think this is a pitfall that a lot of our new grads tend to fall into. They don't want to hear, I am outgoing, I'm patient focused, I'm a team player. Instead, they'd rather hear one or two of those items and give a story that exemplifies when you were a team player or when you were patient focused, right? You really wanna make sure your clinical experiences come alive. So in the interview format, what we recommend just to help yourself stay organized is the SARS method. So that's situation, action that you took, and then um, R is the subsequent positive result. We'll go ahead and look at these in an example next. So why do you wanna work for St. Elizabeth? If you are interviewing at St. Elizabeth, you can guarantee that this will be one of your questions. So this is really too where our research does pay off. So we go ahead and we look on the right hand side of the screen. There's the um, mission statement, the values and the standout facts that we had pulled earlier. Again, just a couple of minutes it took us to find those. Um, and this is where it really can all kind of come together. So the question is, why do you wanna work for St. Elizabeth? Using the SARS method, our answer would be, so situation or introduction, as I began researching hospitals in the area, I came across St. Elizabeth and was blown away by their commitment to compassionate care. I learned that during COVID, St. E did not only retain their nurses, but gave them a bump in pay. This was truly unheard of as many organizations were laying off employees at high rates. To me, this exemplified St. Elizabeth's mission of compassionate care. See, we already referenced the mission statement here. That was really good. And then tying it all together. I want to work for an organization that not only invests into the lives of their patients, but also into the lives of their employees. St. Elizabeth has certainly done that, and I would love to work for such a values-centered organization. If you were to give an answer like this, it would knock the socks off of our hiring managers. The research that's in here, the thought that went into it, it really comes across as very impressive, um, and, and certainly an answer like this would be remembered. Okay, moving on to thinking positively. So you wanna make sure that each and every item that you discussed is framed positively. We do understand that there are going to be negative experiences that you have uh, come across, but negativity is a red flag. So we've got an example here that we pulled straight from a resume we received. My preceptor that I had never paid attention to her patients. She was negligent and I had to resort to going above and beyond to make sure her patients were safe. I was finally reassigned and then COVID cut my experience short. All in all, the situation was extremely disappointing. So coming across this, obviously um, it framed a very negative experience. And in the next slides here, you'll see of how this could have been uh, taken at more of a positive approach. So in using the SARS method that we have men mentioned prior to this, during my role transition at Children's Hospital, I learned that my preceptor and I had different definitions of patient care. Therefore, I took the initiative to discuss the differences with my instructor, and we collaborated to create a specific ways I could meet the needs of my patients in my current role. This included making additional rounds and addressing patient needs with my preceptor. Result was greater patient satisfaction and a better relationship with my preceptor. So as you can see, we have introduced the situation, we've discussed the action of the item you did, and then we also had a positive outcome. Yeah. And compared to our previous example where it was pulled from the resume, this really highlights somebody that is able to handle conflict well, that is mature in being able to discuss um, maybe issues with other nurses, and somebody that is low drama, and that's always a plus. Okay, and then once you get to the end of your interview, you're the, the managers really wanna hear from you um, and you know wanna hear the questions that you might have. So you've been talking the entire time, giving lots of awesome examples, using the SARS method, all of those sorts of things. So this is the opportunity for you to turn the tables and ask some of your um, questions that you've had. So we recommend coming up with a couple of questions beforehand. Even if you have them written out on a notepad, those are great. 
the number one is you wanna be able to be sure that you're asking questions. It is a red flag when you don't ask questions. And because our, our managers are trained in behavioral-based interviewing, you've talked about yourself a lot. There's still a lot that's left to ask about the position, about the unit, about the organization, and about the nurse manager's experiences as well. So piggybacking off of that and asking questions, we asked our managers, what are the best questions to ask in an interview from a candidate mm -hmm. standpoint? And this is what we received back. Can you describe your background and your own experience with working at St. Elizabeth? What opportunities for growth and advancement does St. Elizabeth offer to its employees? What is the personality of your unit and how would you describe your unit's morale? What are the expectations of a new graduate on this unit? What is the nurse to patient ratio on your unit and are there any upcoming changes? What is something you wish you would have learned earlier in your nursing career? What is a project or initiative your unit is working on for performance improvement? How does floor orientation look and how does it prepare a new graduate for the unit? What do you feel sets your unit apart from other similar units? So as you can see here, we've got number eight highlighted and this is for a specific reason. We were actually told by one of our managers that they assume that the candidate is not interested in moving forward on the unit with an offer if they do not ask this question. So it's very important and it shows that you have true interest in that area and that you're wanting to know and be prepared for next steps on that unit. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, wonderful. So this kind of brings us to the end. Um, if there are any questions anyone has for myself or Nicole, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can reach us by going um, and applying online. We'll additionally give our contact information out to your instructors so that they can uh, talk and disperse that. And if anybody wants to talk with us, you're more than welcome to set up a time to chat. Thank you so much for having us today. Thank you. Thank you all, we really appreciate it. Um, one question before we do go, I wanted to pick your brain a little bit about students that may be doing role transitions or other work with you. And how do you all view that as part of the process? And then a separate question would be um, if they are currently working and want to let it be known that they wanna move up in the organization or make connections, what are the best ways to do that? So that's a great question. What we always recommend is that you contact um, the manager directly. I apologize. So what we recommend is that you contact the manager directly um, if you're already working on that unit. So if you are a CNA there or you're a CCT there, tell your manager or tell maybe your preceptor or another nurse there, I'm interested in staying on this unit long-term. They're going to be excited to hear about that. And then in addition, if they are on the unit, um, they and they are interested in applying for that unit, we would absolutely love for them to list that experience, um, you know, that role transition on their resume, because it does help with us and knowing, hey, they already know the manager, this manager is probably aware of who they are, and it's a better connection for that uh, potential new hire. Great. Well, we really appreciate it. Thank you um, for doing that today and joining us. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you for, for having, having us. us.